It is August 18th in 2022 with another RPG a day video. And here we're getting asked, where is your favorite place to play? At home. When I really have a chance to dive into a game and have an opportunity to host a game with people that uh, I really want to just kind of have a solid feeling and, and know that they understand what we're getting ready to jump into. I want to do it here. Uh, and it can go from one extreme to another for why I choose this on one end of the spectrum is because uh, I've just got, I know I have a large comfortable table for everyone to sit at uh, plenty of chairs right now. We're up to, uh, four people total that's including myself so myself and three players although we are uh, currently looking at adding a, a fourth player to the party and it's just very easy i have uh well behind me you can see that i am you know unlike most people who want to sit in front of their uh collection of books uh i I collect artwork and a lot of the artwork that I have fits in with my favorite genre fantasy. Uh, although I do have a few pieces that are more, more going to fall into some science fiction uh, and some abstract stuff, but I am more able to control the environment here. Uh, as far as access to music, I have a decent stereo system set up in this room so uh, I can get some, a good level of background music if I want to add that to when we're strictly playing theater of the mind where there's nothing else on the table here uh, I know you see me kind of pointing off here to the side of the screen and that's because I'm in the main room where I'm at and here's where I am filming for my channel and just off to my right is actually where the table is set up off kind of extended in that part of the room over there and I've done a lot to make things easy on doing visuals, even when I'm doing theater of the mind, instead of throwing a battle map down, uh, I have pictured behind me a, when I'm sitting at that table, uh, there is a magnetic wall. Uh, it's not terribly cheap to do, but it's fairly inexpensive. Uh, you get some magnetic paint from Rust-Oleum. There's some much more higher end ones out there that are a little bit more expensive. But the Rustolium stuff works out pretty good and it actually has decent coverage. I have uh, three dry erase magnetic mats that stick to the wall. So if I want to illustrate something out, instead of having to always be leaning over my screen, if I'm using one, I can just do it on the wall behind me and everybody in front can see what's going on. There's not a bad vantage point for when we're actually looking at something like that. In fact, I still have uh stuff on the wall from me running a little bit of a one-off D, D game session from yesterday or actually no it wasn't yesterday it was uh this past weekend on saturday the other reason on the other kind of extreme for why i feel most comfortable running here is when we do actually use miniatures and terrain i've like many people in the hobby have been involved in making terrain i used to play tabletop war games a very long time ago i had a completely different channel on youtube which has pretty much gone dormant and is being supplanted by this one slowly but surely and in that era of my time on youtube and gaming i was very heavily involved into using miniatures and terrain in role-playing games so again having a you know four foot by eight foot table, nice, big, wide open space in the middle of it. I can minimize the amount of stuff that I have on the table and still have plenty of room to lay out a few things on the table to give some visual interest to what's going on, and especially if it becomes a very, very tactical game to play. Uh, sometimes theater of the mind doesn't always work out and can sometimes cause confusion. And that's where having a mat or having miniatures and I'm not talking about using rulers and stuff, but just having a visual where you can interact with something. And it also 
it, I know some people think of this as a detriment. It does draw people's attention back to the game. Uh, more often, I, I notice that when I am running games that involve uh, using miniatures and stuff like that, that even while someone is not interacting with the table itself, they are less likely, at least in my experience, to become completely sidetracked and be working on their phone doing something like that. But, you know, that's when they want to just throw the idea of not having devices at the table completely out the window. Home is always, I think, for many people who run games, the most comfortable place to be, as long as you're comfortable with those people being in your home. And, you know, this kind of goes back to previous videos about, quote unquote, vetting people. And it's not a bad thing to do. You know, once you get comfortable with people and, you know, you feel that you can welcome them into your house as actual friends and not just acquaintances, it also gives people that kind of feeling of, hey, you know, I can relax here. I'm, I'm in a different environment. I'm in a friendly environment uh, that's geared towards doing this kind of activity. And, you know, this room is set up more or less for playing games and doing some videos. I have still more work to do, but we're moving along at a decent pace. So that's why I choose home as my favorite place to play.